Hey, what's up everyone? John of the Geek here, and this is the parts list and overview of an FM2 Plus system build guide following this video. Starting with the motherboard, I am using the ASRock FM2A88X Extreme 6 Plus. This is an ATX size motherboard, which is a little bit different than other FM series motherboards because they are usually a small form factor micro ATX. It's able to accommodate up to four modules of memory, ranging everything from 1066 to 2400 megahertz, but I really don't recommend going any lower than 1600 megahertz. The rear I.O. of the motherboard consists of two USB 2.0 ports, a PS2 combination port, VGA, dual link DVI, a display port, HDMI out, HDMI in, an eSATA port, four USB 3.0 ports, an ethernet port, optical SPDIF out, and audio jacks. There are seven SATA ports on the motherboard that are running off the 88X chipset. There are six here, and the other one is on the motherboard down by the BIOS chips. Which, by the way, there are two of them in case one were to fail or you screw up some overclock settings. They are also replaceable if you need to do so. There's a 16, 8, and 4 by PCI Express slots. However, if you use two of them for crossfire configuration, you'll be using the 8 by 8 bandwidth. There's also a couple of PCI Express 1s and PCI slots available too. For the CPU, I'm using the AMD 760K Richland series 3.8 GHz quad core CPU. Yes, that's correct, a CPU instead of an APU, which is what you would typically see in this FM2 Plus build. Although the CPU comes with a stock cooler, I decided to upgrade to a popular aftermarket cooling solution. This is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo with its 120mm PWM fan and four direct contact copper heat pipes. Okay, so 16 gigs of 186600MHz memory might be a little overkill, but I got this G-Skill Sniper Series kit for a really good price. I could not pass it up. I mean, just look at it. It's so snipery. Alright, so let's get to the meat of the product, and by meat, I mean GPU. This is the ASUS R7-260X with the DirectCU 2 cooler on it. It's probably the lowest I would go for GPU other than the 750Ti from the green team. Look at the size of those massive heat pipes that keeps this card running cool and requiring only one 6-pin power connector. For connectivity, you pretty much have one of everything, but I would recommend that you game with at most one 1080p screen. This card isn't going to power an iFinity gaming setup. The power supply is a basic but reliable Antec Neo Eco 620 watt PSU that is a 80 plus bronze certified. More than enough power for this build but also with a little bit more room to add another GPU or upgrade to an R9 series later on. For the drives I'm using one of everything, a basic DVD burner, 1TB hard drive, and SSD as my boot drive. And the main reason why I have included all three is because I just wanted to show you how to install all three different size form factors. For the case I'm using my current favorite by Fractal Design and this is the ArcMIDI R2. I bought a bunch of them for about 50 bucks each so you'll be seeing this case in a few future builds coming up. Well that concludes the overview of the parts. Be sure to check out the description for the links to the parts as well as links to the second and third video in this guide. Let me know in the comments below on what parts are currently the best bang for the buck. Please subscribe and share this video for those of you who are interested in building an AMD FM2 Plus system. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.